Matthew 24 is a whole lot easier to go through than the book of Revelation. So if you can make the case that Matthew chapter 24 was in fact also in Revelation chapter 6, it's easier than to go into, math, in, into the book of Revelation. So there, that, that was why I think we both dealt with Matthew chapter 24, because we both saw it as being a fulfillment of the book of Revelation. And uh, I didn't realize that James Hamilton was going to do that, but it, it, it made my point. But continuing in Matthew 24, verse 30, Then will appear in heaven the sign of the Son of Man. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Now, once again, this is what we see across the New Testament, Acts 1, 9 through 11. They're gazing into heaven as he ascends into heaven, and, and the angel says to them, why do you stand looking into heaven? You will see him come just as you saw him go. He's going to come on the clouds of heaven. Alluding, of course, to Daniel 7, when the Son of Man comes on the clouds of heaven and is pre presented before the Ancient of Days. This is a direct quotation from the book of Daniel, chapter 7. And you go back and look at Daniel, chapter 7, and what do you find? It's the Son of Man going up to the Ancient of Days. This isn't the descent. This is an ascent. This is the vindication of the Son of Man. The sign is the fact that Jesus, the Son of Man, is in heaven. That's how Revelation 1 opens up. Where is this man dressed? And he's, he's, he's pictured like Ezekiel pictures, pictures God in Ezekiel chapter 1. Where is he? He's in heaven. Why is this taking place? Because Jesus is in heaven. Uh, incidentally, when Jesus says here in Matthew 24, 30, they will see the Son of Man... Uh, that's gonna. That's picking up um, um, imagery from Daniel 7, coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. You say, well, this talks about the coming, the coming of you know God's coming, Jesus' coming. Look, go back to the Old Testament. Notice how many times God comes in judgment. Look at Micah chapter one. Spend time looking at Micah chapter one for a moment. Um, there are other places as well. Uh, Isaiah chapter 19. It says that God comes to Egypt on a cloud and the idols uh, tremble at his presence. That language is Old Covenant language, Old Testament language for coming in judgment. In fact, if you read Revelation chapter 2 and 3, you'll see how three times Jesus threatens to come in judgment against three local churches. That's neither a destruction of Jerusalem in AD 70 coming or, it, uh, or a, a, coming, a, a second coming. By the way, I do believe in the second coming where Jesus wraps all this up. But that's not what this is dealing with here.